Hi everybody, welcome back to the kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. I'm Amy and welcome. If you're new here, I love teaching people how to make very easy sourdough recipes. So today we are going to make a very easy cinnamon swirl raisin sourdough bread. I know that's a mouthful, but it's not hard. So let's go ahead and get started. The night before you plan to mix your dough, go ahead and feed your starter. I like to add 15 grams of my starter to a clean jar, along with 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. Stir that up and let it sit overnight so that in the morning it's nice and active and bubbly and ready to mix. In a large bowl, you're going to mix 100 grams of your active starter. You're going to mix 375 grams of water and 10 grams of salt. Now go ahead and mix all that up and stir it around really good to disperse that sourdough starter into the water. But spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you when we get to our first stretch and fold that I made a mistake here, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So go ahead, get all that mix, and then we're going to add our flour. So we decided to use 50 grams of whole wheat flour and 50 grams of rye flour just to give this dough or this bread just a little bit, you know, different flavor profile. So, um, and then uh, 400 grams of bread flour. Mix all that in and just use your hands if you need to. Um, I use a, a stiff spatula, but just get that all mixed together. Make sure there's no dry bits left in the bowl. Um, cover it and we're gonna let that sit for an hour so that the uh, flour can absorb all that water. Now, while that is sitting there, go ahead and bring a pot of water to a, a simmer and then turn the burner off and then add a half a cup of raisins and a half a cup of walnuts to the water. We're gonna let those sit so that's gonna plump those walnuts up and the raisins up so that when we add them to the dough, they don't uh, steal any water from the dough. So just kind of let that sit there. Then once the dough has rested for an hour, you're gonna do your first set of stretch and folds. Now you'll see when I go to do this, the dough is like really stiff and I was like, oh, I only put 360 grams. So I wanted you to see this because if you ever mix your dough up and you get to this first uh, stretch and fold and your dough is too stiff, go ahead and add a little bit of water, okay? So I went ahead and added those 15 grams of water that I was missing and worked that in and you can see how this dough loosens up beautifully. And if the dough had been too sticky, then I could have dusted it with some flour to kind of bring it back to where it needs to be. So. Just wanted to point that out in case this ever happens to you and you can make that correction without any worries. So once I added that, work that in really well, cover it up, and now you're gonna let that sit and relax for 30 minutes. Go ahead and drain the walnuts and the raisins. You want all that water out of there. And then once the dough has rested for 30 minutes, Pour them into the bowl and you're going to work those in. This should take about a minute and a half to two minutes to do. And you're basically just squeezing and kind of kneading the dough until all of those are worked in really, really well. So you're going to cover that dough up and now we're just going to let it sit there and rise. Um, I tested it at 70 degrees and it took about three and a half to four hours to rise by about 30%. And so at that point, you want to go ahead and shape it. Now, if your kitchen is colder than 70 degrees, it's gonna take a couple hours longer. And if it's warmer than 70 degrees, you wanna check it, you know, after an hour, oh, no, not an hour, about two to three hours. So, and it's okay if it goes to about 50%, don't worry. So go ahead and take it out. And now it's time to shape. But before you take it out, you gotta make your butter cinnamon sugar paste. So take four tablespoons of softened room temperature butter and add a quarter cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of, of vanilla, and I added a pinch of nutmeg. You don't have to do that, but I'm telling you, it is so good. So if you don't like nutmeg, just don't add it. Don't worry about that. Make, uh, stir that in and get that paste really, really smooth. Set it aside. 
Now, take your dough and turn it out onto a floured work surface. And you're going to press this dough out into a rectangular shape, almost like you're making a cinnamon roll. And once you get it out, kind of as far as you, as you can, um, you're gonna take that butter and you're gonna spread it over the surface, leaving an edge around the you know, perimeter of the dough. So once you have that spread on, use a bench scraper or something to help you get that dough from sticking to the work surface. Just fold the dough over, as you can see like I'm doing, and keep folding it because you're trying to get that butter uh, paste on the inside of the dough to where it's not anywhere on the outside. So you can see how I'm doing that. Flip the dough over and then start shaping it like you're going to put it into your banneton. Now, I started shaping this into a ball and then I remembered I wanted to use an oval banneton, so I just quickly pulled it into an oval shape, no big deal. Flour your banneton, flour the outside of the bread, and then flip it over into your banneton with the seam side up. Let that rest on the counter for 30 minutes to an hour, and then you can decide if you want to bake it that same day or if you want to put it in the fridge and let it do a cold ferment. That's what I prefer because I like a longer ferment on my sourdough breads, but you don't have to do that. If you want to bake it that same day, just let it sit on the counter until it's risen by, you know, up to the top of the banneton and then you can go ahead and bake it. Whether you choose to bake it that same day or the next day, cold from the fridge, put a Dutch oven into your oven and preheat your oven to 450 degrees. Let that preheat for you know at least 30 minutes or so. And then when you're ready to bake, take a piece of parchment paper. I like to use the Costco brand because I've never had a problem with it sticking to my bread. So take a piece of that, take your dough and turn it onto the parchment paper. I'm taking my dough straight out of the fridge cold then you're gonna to want to just lightly score it. Do not go too deep. You're just giving this dough a place to rise and that's it. You just don't want it busting out the side or anything. You want to give it the, the rising point. That's why we score the dough. Put it into the Dutch oven. I use the parchment paper like a sling. Put the lid on it, bake it for 30 minutes, remove the lid, bake it for another 20 minutes or until it's as dark as you like it and then take it out of the oven and you're gonna transfer it to a cooling rack. Now, be very careful because it does have butter on the inside and there's a possibility like this one that the butter will start leaking out of it somewhere on this bread. So what I did was take a piece of parchment paper and put it underneath the cooling rack so that I could then slide that bread off and then the parchment underneath is gonna catch all that butter so you don't have a mess or you can put the cooling rack onto like a baking sheet or something like that. But just let it cool. Do not slice this bread until it's cooled or you will have a runny, gummy mess, okay? I know it's gonna be tempting because your kitchen is gonna smell amazing and you're gonna want to have this bread like ASAP. Let it cool down before you slice into it and I promise you will thank me for waiting, okay? So the bread is amazing right out of the oven cooled, you know, without anything on it. Um, it's amazing as toast. You can use it as French toast. Um, like it's so good. I, you're, I know that you're going to love this bread and I cannot wait for you to try it. If you have any leftovers or if you want to pre-bake a bunch of these loaves and have them for later, the way that I store all of my sourdough bread is in the freezer. When I have a loaf, anything that is not eaten that day, I slice it up, put pieces of parchment paper between the, the slices, stick it into a freezer bag, and it's in the freezer. It never lasts for a month, but you can keep it there for up to a month. So with this bread, I say the same thing. If you have anything left over that you know you're not gonna eat after day two, slice it up, stick it in the fridge, and you will be able to just pull one out, 
put it right into a toaster or a toaster oven and it's amazing so I know you guys are going to love this recipe I can't wait to hear what you think about it so let me know in the comments if you make it if you're not subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe and like this video so that other people can see this recipe there's a link in the description box for it and I will see you next time bye